always a Yelid, is the foremost internationally acclaimed authority on developing true connections. A Yelid is the founder and CEO of Universal Connections Inc., the world's premier relationship firm that is revolutionizing life through holism and truth. A highly sought life and relationship coach, professional matchmaker, astrologer, philosopher, and author. A Yelit is always a Yelit. Today's show is sponsored by Mount Gox, Mezzi Grill, and usgoldcoins.com. Hello, and welcome to episode number five of Always a Yelit. It is my absolute pleasure and sin sincere pleasure to be here yet again. And I want to thank you so much for joining me and sharing with me my message of love and freedom and truth and also spreading the word to the best of your abilities like you have been. Um, you can join me, like my page on Facebook, Always Ayelet. And you can also find me on my website, which is alwaysayelet.com. Um, tonight, I want to first, um, you know, again, re-encourage re or reinforce the message of to the victims of Hurricane Irene. I know some people are still without power. I know some people are still struggling without their belongings. This too shall pass. You have your life. You have your souls. Keep it together. Have patience. And um, this is what matters in the end, um, what we have. Um, the other thing, too, I wanted to mention is extending my condolences to the victims of the attack in South Israel that happened a few days ago. Um, it's a travesty. It's a tragedy. It's, it's heartbreaking. It's sad. It needs to end the, the endless attacks. And we can only pray and be strong and choose love and make the hard decisions that are love-based in order to change the way things are and um, to protect ourselves and to preserve our life and our sanctity of, of who we are as individuals, as human beings, as Americans and as in human beings on, on this planet. And I also wanted to bring to, um, to light the very important time of year that is up upon us. It's, the summer is almost over and lo and behold it is um, the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Um, upon us and it wouldn't be a more suitable time to remind everyone to um, keep keep vigilant, keep aware, be educated, be informed, make decisions that are love-based, not fear-based. There is a perpetual battle between love and fear and they are the two prevailing deciding factors that affect all of our all of our human decisions if you dice it up and slice it up what you'll end up with is either love or fear and don't challenge me trust me i've analyzed this up and down anything you want to decide about you can make a choice out of love or make a choice out of fear if you're making fear-based choices it's not love it will not lead to anywhere but eventual pain destruction and um loss but if we make love based choices continuously consistently always then the road we travel may be a little more challenged a little more bumpy a little more difficult however we will ultimately achieve our goal and i say this with all my heart and all sincerity and um, from a place of experience um, i've made love-based choices for the majority of my life in the past 10 to 15 years and as difficult as those choices may have been and are still for me to maintain, um, no one can take my sense of self from me, no matter what I may gain or lose. Um, in my sense of self, in my choosing love, that is the ultimate strength, the ultimate power, if you will. And it doesn't entail um, a imposing power on others, oppressing others, or a emotional need or desire to control or possess anyone or anything if we detach ourselves from this potential that we have as human beings we will be inevitably free free to love and to choose love continuously so um, let's educate ourselves let's get informed let's inform our friends our families our neighbors our communities our society and together we will prevail 
the war in the war against fear and hate and all things that are threatening our humanity, our life as we know it. Um, today, I have joining me a very special guest. He's an, a remarkable intellectual and talent that I immediately connected with when I met him or heard of him or learned of him. And how is an interesting story as well. It's all interconnected, my friends. Um, his name is Ricardo Costa. He is a playwright, he is a writer, and he is a brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, up-and-coming talent. Um, not up-and-coming, he's coming, he's arriving, he's, he's, he's arriving. Um, uh, my dear friend Tim Moss, you might remember him, he joined me in my first episode, who is also a very brilliant and talented um, artist and uh, actor. He recently announced that he was featured as, I believe, one of the star characters in a play off-Broadway called The Choice. Of course, it was compelling upon me to see my friend Tim in his play. And when he told me a little bit about it, I was intrigued but didn't know what to expect. You, know, you never know what to expect when you're going to off-Broadway theater. And so I went. And the night before, I you know, wished him my congrats online, on Facebook, and... And the, the people who were uh, writing in were saying, wow, what a great cast, what a great play. And I was more enthused about going the following night. And to my very, um, um, to my great amazement, not, not shock, but amazement um, and enjoyment, I was deeply moved and touched by the, the subject, the content, the play, the acting, the cast. It was all just phenomenal. And I was introduced after the play to the playwright Ricardo Costa. We found, an, I think, an instant simpatico. And so he's joining me today. And I'm hoping, I know it's short notice and it's not a very big theater, but I'm hoping you can still get tickets to his last appearance. They extended the show for one extra week because they were just really doing so well. Um, and the last show is airing September 3rd. That's this weekend. It's Saturday at 9 p.m at the, what is it called? The, the Theater for the New City. The Theater for the New City in New York City. So let me first, allow me to introduce this brilliant talent, Ricardo Costa. He joins us here. He was, um, Ricardo was born in Bologna, Italy. He holds a master's in media studies and a certificate in media management and leadership. He graduated with a BFA in film and television production from New York University's Tisch School of the Arts. He got the job, um, he got a job actually a while ago with Spike Lee and then was invited yet again to assist him in a concert the following year. This relationship spurred on to him completing his award-winning third short film called Change the World, another message that I'm working to, to do one member at a time, one viewer at a time. And um, this uh, film, Change the World, screened in more than 30 festivals worldwide, receiving very important recognition. He completed his fourth short film called Crossing, starring Joe Morton, Hazel Goodman, and Anthony Mackie, who is now starring also in two of Spike Lee's movies. And um, that play, and it played in more than 40 festivals and won awards in several international film festivals and it has been broadcast in several TV channels, including CBS. He was a playwright in residence at Philip Seymour Hoffman's Labyrinth Theatre Company in, in the summer of 2009. And his play, The Choice, won as Best Play at the Downtown Urban Theatre Festival at the Theatre of the New City in New York City, where it is now playing and is still playing for I believe there's one more one, one more, more show one more show. So without further delay, allow me to introduce my dear friend Ricardo Ricardo Costa. Thank you so much for having me, um, the writer of the choice. And let me just add, um, the choice, theexaminer.com wrote that the choice is a candid look at human nature, judgment, and the will to live. Um, he describes the play as addressing division based on religion or class or gender or politics and makes a case for how much we are all the same, especially at a moment when the past ceases 
to matter, which by the way is every minute, <laughs> every minute we're alive, the past doesn't exist anymore. The only thing that does exist is us and our potential for tomorrow. And we stand exposed to the end of everything. And I question Ricardo and I say, is it the end of everything or is it the beginning of everything? And, um, and so we, here we are today to talk about um, his brilliant work, The Choice. I, if, I, if I might add, my own personal perception is that it was just an intelligent way to show that the choice... Do, do you want to tell us what the choice is? Or, well, the choice Or should is, I save it for the, for the audience? Actually, I would like to hear what you think of the choice, what the choice is according to you. I mean, I, I okay. love your work, I love everything you do, and Thank being, you. I've been following you on TV as well as reading, so I would just like... I want to know what the love woman thinks of the choice. Well, what I well what what the choice did, um, what the choice did on stage was identify all the various perspectives of humanity, if you will, or or let's just not say it's not all of humanity because a lot of people were not represented in your play in the characters of your play. I don't think it would ever be possible to represent all individuals, but. There, were, there was a cast of, I believe, seven or eight individuals, very different individuals in and of themselves, with very differing opinions and ideologies. And, and there was a, should, I, should I tell the audience what the play was about? Sure, please. Okay, it, it was brilliantly done, I have to say. <laughs> what I think I loved most about it was that it showed the truth. It showed the biased truths on various perspectives. But it also showed the ultimate truth that life is not for us to decide. Who lives, who dies, what is, what isn't, isn't for us to decide. I believe in God. I think we share that strong belief, you being a, an Italian Catholic and me being a Jewish American Israeli. Um, I think we, we, we believe in God. I think our identity with God being one, the source, the one God, God is one. I think we have that in common, that shared belief. And I don't believe that it's for humans. And I think, it, especially in light of what I introduced as far as the concept of love and fear, and of course my predominant message is truth. Truth, not your biased truth. And, and you know, that there's this whole debate, I'm sure you're aware of, of what is truth and mm -hmm. is truth subjective and is it... Well, there is our individual truth and that is unique and individual to each of ourselves. And then there's, and that's based on facts. It's based on what is, and it's based on the truth of your soul, which is intangible, hard to decipher, but only one can sense for oneself and thereby be true to it. That's the crux of my message. Um, the, the, the idea of your play showing differing opinions some, some lines I totally were like, wow, yeah, I believe that. And some lines I was like, no, I don't believe that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Again, they were, they were characters are presenting the different perspectives. But ultimately, the play is about a young lad. Mm -hmm. Let's call him in his early 20s, I think is how he was depicted. Uh, a, young, a young man who just inherited this mansion. $8 million was the yes. price tag. I have a good memory about the details. What do you know? Uh, the, the price of the house was about $8 million dollars. And I have to say, I, I have to inter interject that my friend Tim Moss is a brilliant, amazing character, actor. I mean, if he could play the role that he did, let me tell you something. God bless, because he was an amazing talent. And if not to see Ricardo's work, you go to see Tim Moss, then God bless. They were, they're, it's brilliant. And I'm just, I can't wait to see and be part of your future work as well. But back, back to the play. Um, this young man, 20-something, early 20s, just inherits this $8 million house from his grandmother. I think he kind of lost everything. He doesn't have, I don't know what he has, really. I, I, I didn't get it. He wasn't a strong character, if you will. He didn't have a strong character about him, but that was, I guess, the, the message in and, all, in, in, a, in and of it all. And so he's having an open house for this, new inheritance that he just became, got, became possessor of, mm -hmm. that he needs to sell because he needs the money, because apparently he doesn't know how to manage money very well. And um, that was my, my, my perception. I think he drinks or he was gambling or yeah, something. Yeah, gambling. Gambling. And so um, 
he, I'm never really good at telling stories. I'm surprised at myself. Thank you, Ricardo. Yeah. This is a good challenge exactly. for me. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm good at telling my stories, but not other stories, but this is good. So, so um, Tom, I believe his name mm -hmm. was, the character's name. Tom inherits this $8 million house, and he's having this open house, and all these different characters walk in. And there's a politician, there's a, 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 a liberal politician who's, you know, how they are. And then there's, I'm sorry, no offense to anyone. And then there's this right-wing Jewish uh, businessman, and you know how they are, <laughs> no offense. And then there is this, there's all these different characters. I don't want to, to kill the mm -hmm. play. There's all these different characters, you know, extracts of our, I have to say it's a New York society, it's our New York world. It's Definitely. not the entire world or all of humanity, but it's our New York life, if you will. You know, the New York metropolitan area. And... And uh, while they're in this house and they're, they're engaging in some debate and the characters are debating, engaging in some debate on ideas and whatever, uh, an alarm goes off. And this is familiar to all us New Yorkers who just experienced yet an earthquake and a hurricane in one week. So this alarm goes off for a nuclear fallout. And lo and behold, this house has a bunker in the basement that was created by this man's grandmother before she died. And it's only equipped to save the life of three people for the duration of a year, I believe. Exactly. And only three people can live in this bunker. And now they're in this house. They have an hour to decide who goes to the bunker and who doesn't. I'm not going to say how it ends, but um, I think it ended eloquently, quite frankly. <laughs> Thank you. In light of the playwright, I have to say. Um, and the, the, so the, there's a whole, uh, the whole play is about a dialogue and a debate of who goes and who stays and why they should go and why they should stay. And Tom is this young kid with really no life experience, but yet there is a purity about him and an op that, that enables him to, um, what's the word? There's a purity about him or a lack of knowledge about him that enables him to, to, to grasp his own sense of what should be or, or what shouldn't be. And a lot unfolds. It was very provoking, very deep, very I yell it. <laughs> it was definitely very always I yell it. And that's why I was so moved by this. And afterwards, not only did I have to get a big hug and a kiss from my friend Tim, I had to meet the playwright and there he was. We hugged and kissed and here we are today. So without any further, that's, that was my take on it. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So the, the take, I, I, you know, it, it just showed the divisiveness, if you will. I, I think how Andre, your director, described it the divisiveness of humanity when all, and I say this all the time, we are uniquely distinct. We have to find our unique differences and be true to those uniquenesses and those unique differences all the while recognizing that in the end we're all alike. We're fundamentally, you know, and I'm also an astrologer, I don't know if you're aware, but in astrology, the language of astrology is, is, teaches us that universality, that there are 12 universal areas of life, that there are 12 signs, and how they get translated in one person's individual chart is unique into and onto himself. No two, no two charts are the same. But again, this message is so deep and deeply etched within each individual being that if only we can own this truth and love and not fear our differences but embrace our differences. But I ultimately have to say that anything fear-based, in my view, needs to be eradicated from our, from our planet because there's no way we're, we are ever going to win. Humanity is never going to win. As long as fear pervades this earth, there will be oppression, there will be control, there will be war, there will be, there will be hate, as long as fear, and, 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 and it's innate to, human, to humanity, but we are on the dawn of an awakening, we are on the dawn of a new era, and my last show, episode four, with Dr. Samuel Jouet from Afghanistan, we talked about the whole idea on fear and love and, um, you know, being in the being in a war on terror and living in the aftermath of 9/11, and seeing your play and knowing the impending threat. I mean, those are scary symbols. There, you know, that's a scary symbol. That's a very scary symbol of nuclear. It's 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 a threat and it exists. And 
that's a truth. It's a reality. It does exist. And it's based on fear. It's based on the need to control or oppress others. And my darlings, from the microcosm of your individual selves and your individual relationships with yourselves and your fellow and your neighbors and your lovers and your family to the macrocosm of national and global politics, it's the same truth that applies and that is fear or love and what are we going to choose and um, we as you I believe God who created us chose love he also in his wisdom created the idea of fear and there's a reason for it and then it's for us to overcome that and be love as he is fear will only destroy love will always always create and build so tell me my darling Ricardo I love your name by the way thank you it reminds me of Ricky Ricardo <laughs> I'm an I Love Lucy fan but tell me so you're in the United States now for 15 years correct tell me your story tell me what inspired you to to write the choice to do the work that you the other works that you've done tell me what what makes you you who are you and well, who, who am I? I mean, what inspired me to write The Choice was a study actually that I read a few years ago about Swedish uh, psychiatrists, like putting people in a room and telling them there was the end of the world out of the door. And who, the, pers the first person who actually was going to be able to step out of the door was the one who was going to be saved. And nobody actually got up. And it was a long, long... So split. nobody... Want, wait, so the study was by a psychiatrist that if there were if there was a war and you had a chance to live would you go out if you, the only way to live was to go out to exactly exit room, but no, and no one got out no one got out interesting yeah and it was a long is long this a true study yeah yeah do, do you know who did the study no because they read it like on science magazine like a few years ago that's very interesting but like yeah and it was um so it kind of gave me the inspiration say like how can i apply that into like the actually real real life I mean, do you believe that to be a truth that was that a, do you believe that to be a valid study? Do you believe that if given the choice, people wouldn't just trample each other to get to the door first? Well, that was the point. One of the point was like people wouldn't get up because they were trampling each other, and so nobody actually would make it out because they were going to kill oh. each other before actually before getting, getting there. there. So well, that's that was an so kind of like so die or be dead. Exactly. <laughs> so kind of instinct of survival. Yeah. So it's like where where are you going? And so I kind of like took that material and I fictionalized the material and I said, okay, like how I'm going to make it like, as you actually mentioned before, very intelligently, like how I'm going to make it like a New York story. Uh, and I came out with the characters and I came out with people they see every day when I go in, during, you know, on the walk on the street, or I see on the subway platform. You, you live in Manhattan? Yes, I live in Manhattan. I've been living here for 15 years. And New York. Yeah, don't you love it? Yes, I'm a, I love, I New, love York. New York. Love it is, New York. The, great, it is the, great, great, the greatest city in the world. It is. It's the I'm best one, food. number one. Thank you, thank you. Much. And by the way, I love Italy too. Love thank Italy. You. My favorite country to visit is Italy, my darlings. It is the best, but go Exactly, ahead. to visit, <laughs> to visit. To, to visit. Oh, I, I, I want to have a summer home in, in Chino, Sicily, but we'll talk about that some other time. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll call you so you can help me negotiate the deal. Okay. Well, I'm a good negotiator, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you are. And, and you speak the language. So yes, you go. that helps. Yeah, it does. But go ahead. Go back to the... So, no, so I came out with this idea and I kind of like started writing the play, which is my first play because I usually write screenplays or TV, TV plays. So this was my first like attempt to write a play and I was like, uh, you always, when you write a play, it's very different than writing a screenplay because you don't have editing and you don't have like change of scene, you don't have change of time. So I Everything happened in real time. Right. And um, but I said, I'm going to put myself into it. So I did it and I submitted to a few like um, uh, theater companies. I was able to get into the Labyrinth Theater Company, which was a great experience to develop the play. With, with Philip Seymour Hoffman. With Philip Seymour Hoffman. He's amazing. And Stephen Gurgis, uh, who just now got like Tony nomination. Wow. Uh, so it was just like a very, and working with actors every day, reading the material. It was just like very interesting and helped me to develop. Then I did it last year for the uh, Downtown Urban Theatre Festival, one honorable mention as best play, and I was asked by the theatre for the new city to bring it back uh, in the Dream, uh, Dream Up Festival this year, and it was supposed to have only five nights, and now we have seven so far. So that's I really hope amazing. they extend it further, because I, I announced that we have the last show on September 3rd, but I really hope, I, whoever's the powers that be, I really hope they extend it, because it, it is a must-see. It will leave you thinking. It will leave you feeling, and it and that is what art should do. Art, all art, should leave you feeling and thinking, 
and hopefully um, leading you to a path of truth and exploration. Um, we need to take a break and thank our sponsors, Ricardo, for a few minutes. Sure. But when we get back, I want you to tell me more about your creative process and how you came to create the choice and more about your life um, right after these announcements from our very important sponsors. First, I would like to thank First, I would like to thank MountGox.com. They are an online exchange services for Bitcoins. They now take Euros, British Pounds, Australian Dollars, and Canadian Dollars with continuing fees of 0.3% and two-factor authentication. Also, MezeGrill.com, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor now serving breakfast at 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City, just a couple of blocks south of Columbus Circle. And I would love to thank usgoldcoins.com. That's 1-800-HOTCOIN, our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. Andy takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold by holding your hand. They take a hands-on approach Better to call and speak directly for current inventory. Again, that number is 1-800-HOTCOIN. And I'd love to hear from you, so please give me a jingle at my Ask I Yell at voicemail at 212-569-6969. Again, that number is 212-569-6969. And also, if you would log on to my website at alwaysayella.com, you can save $395 today. That's a lot of money, folks, um, exclusively for only one TV viewers. Register for a special coaching package at alwaysayella.com and receive an extra one-on-one -on -one with Ayella, that's me, at no additional cost. And also, I'd like to announce the must-read, The Value of Love. If you haven't already read it and downloaded it, it's available for a free download at ayeletmedia.com. That's ayeletmedia.com. You can download for free the must-read, Value of Love, and The Gift. If you're seeking true love or not completely happy in the love you have, Please read The Value of Love and The Gift so you will be on your path to finding this. Um, also, um, with me today is Ricardo Costa, the playwright for The Choice, which is performing live for a limited engagement only. There's one show left, which is this Saturday, September 3rd at 9.30 p.m. at the Theater for the New City at 155 First Avenue between 10th between 9th and 10th Street in Manhattan. It's starring Tim Moss and Josh Breckenridge. Tickets are available at the box office or online at www.smartticks.com. That's www.smartticks.com. And so, without any further delay, my darling Ricardo, tell me more about you and your life and your work and the choice. Well, <clears throat> I actually, I want to take something that you said before about truth, and uh, because I always wonder about truth, and when also what actually when I wrote this play, it was about like what real when there is a senator line, say what is the truth? I ask because I don't have an answer, and uh, I don't think I have an answer. Uh, although I say there is something I learned like long, long time. I go from a, like a movement, a Catholic movement. I used to go. To, and and one of the motto one of, was like if something is true is always true. I say this, and it's like something can change, you know, like uh, and that's so in a certain way like a play of words. It's like it's true. I mean, something the water is always gonna be water. It's never gonna be wine. Nature so. is what it is. Truth is what it is. Sir Winston Churchill had a great quote. I love it. I use it all the time. Sir Winston Churchill said, "The truth is incontrovertible." Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is. So lots of like, lo you know, love to people out there who are fear-based and propagating the lies that sustain your fragile egos and fragile existence, but the truth 
is always there. And I love you for bringing that to light. But please tell me more. Yeah, well, the things about, I mean, like, the other things I want to say about it is like the fact that the truth is not, it doesn't depend on human beings. I mean, the truth depends on God or like whoever like spirit you believe in, the spiritual things uh, or like nature, if you want to call it in that way. Yeah. While actually fear is a total human construction. I mean, like, I'm sorry, say that again. It's a human, it's a human construction, the fear. I mean, you create your own fear or you kind of like, I, uh, I agree. Kind of like we say, okay, there is an earthquake. I'm fearful, but you're fearful because you don't know what to do. Right. It's not, but it's something they create, something that comes with you. So if it comes with you, it ends with you. It's something that you can control. Absolutely. So it's not like if you're hungry that you need to food because otherwise you die or or you die if you don't drink something. Right. You know? But like fear is just something you can totally live without, and it's something that you actually create. Growing up, because a kid is just one day born or two days born, doesn't even a concept of death. They, they don't have they don't have fear. Children are pure in spirit. They haven't yet been adversely tainted by life. Exactly. To to to, to be feared and to to develop egos and. And until at five years old, they don't even have a concept of death. They realize right. the concept of death after five years old. So you can tell you that in those five years, these kids believe they're gonna live forever right. because that's what our soul is about is is about like forever it's not about like like finish and that's a very interesting truth you just brought to light as well which is something that i've been trying to um reinforce in my message as well that materialism the material world in which we live is but an illusion it's but an illusion it's only an illusion the only thing real the only thing of any substance is our soul and it is forever you know, I remember being in love, my first love, when I was 18 years old, and I told my mother, you know, how we think our moms don't know anything when we're 18 years old. And my mom, and I was saying, no, me and whoever he was will last forever. My mother said, and she was, at the time, she was my age right now, and she said, no one, she said, nothing lasts forever, Ayala, nothing lasts forever. And you know what, maybe in the material world, she's absolutely right. Most things on this planet don't last forever, but love and our souls do last forever. And if we are true to our souls, we are true to ourselves, we are true to our, if we love ourselves and true to that love, that self-love, everything else will fall into place, no matter what adversity come your way. And, you know, this is a survivor. This is, you know, they say I'm a consummate survivor. You know, I, I like to call myself a champion life master, but, because I know how to, champion life and surviving but um, this is a survivor story this tells the story of survival this tells the story of the human will to survive and to want to be alive and 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 the play I think did a really brilliant job on showing or questioning what is life what does anything mean all those labels that we use to identify ourselves, what does it all mean if it isn't in relation to anything, if it isn't relative or in relation to anything else? In the end, the only thing that matters is you and look at yourself in the mirror. What do you see? Do you see truth? Are you, do you see love when you look in the mirror? Are you living a love-centered life or are you living by being oppressed? By, are you living in fear by either being oppressed, allowing oppression and thereby oppressing others? the control manipulation game that people do, that people play in their one-on-one -on -one relationships, and in our global and national political arena. Um, but that's sort of where, I guess you could say, I think that's how we've kind of found ourselves on the same line, if you will, Absolutely. when it comes to, um, but yeah, I, yeah, we do have, we do believe in forever. We lose that belief because life hurts us challenges us, causes us pain, and, and you can either pick yourself up and keep on trekking and get on the horse again and keep on riding, or you can just throw, you know, throw in the towel and call in a day, but, so, so tell me well, more. Well, you know, there's something interesting about what you're saying, because it comes in my mind what people tend to say, which is like, live this, most of the people today live like, live their day if it's like their last one, and I always challenge them and say, I actually live this day as is my first one. I like that. Because it's like, I have, if it's my last one, there's nothing after. If it's my first one, there's plenty. I love that. So, and, and it's all about, and, and what you just showed us too, is that approach mm -hmm. to how to change. The only thing we can change is our attitude and our approach on how to look at a situation. 
you know, the old cliche of the glass is half full or half empty. And I love that. Yeah. I always say this is the first day of the rest of my, I, I always say that too. It's the first day of the rest of my life. And I'm going to do whatever I can today because we don't know what tomorrow can bring. You know, interesting about the hurricane that we just experienced, I had to do show prep, you know, production work for the show. And the show airs live on Saturdays. But it was, and I wasn't even concerned about the storm, but I like to get things done on Wednesday or Thursday, not last minute. You know, I even told you, be here two mm -hmm. hours before the show because I want to make sure. Because life happens there's always going to be an obstacle there's always going to be something that's going to take you away from your dreams from your desire from fulfilling the best of your human potential they always will exist now you can throw in the towel and call it a day and say okay i give up or you could say you know what today's my day let me get it done what can i do make your list check it off you know like santa claus and and get it done and just do it and it was the good thing that i did because i had my show done and emailed to the studio on thursday so that when friday happened i was i was good to go and then in, in, in the end we had to reschedule because i wasn't able to the city was closed it was impossible to get into manhattan and the studio was obviously closed and um the, but, but I had no power for 36 hours. Imagine if I waited till Saturday, I would have been, even though the studio was shut, I never would have been able to get to today's show, to the, to the airing of today, because I would have still been unprepared mm -hmm. because of work I could have done and should have done a week ago, which I did do, by the way. So here we are. <laughs> so always be prepared. I know Boy Scout 101 is be prepared, be aware, be, aware. be vigilant, be aware. Um, Look back only to learn from the past. Don't bury yourself in the past, but look forward. Always keep your eye going forward. And if something works, let it work. If it's not working, cut it, redefine it, or, or end it. Um, those are your options. But um, we must find the courage for truth and um, hopefully... I believe this is a new era upon us. I, Dr. Sam from Afghanistan concurred with me. Um, he, we're, we're, at, we're at an awakening. I, I feel it. I know it. It's spiritual. It's, it's universal. It's happening. Your work is indicative of it. My work is indicative of it. And the work of all the great workers, you know, they call them, I don't want to use any labels of light workers or whatever because some of that has, to, has a lot to be desired even in that label I don't like labels but the work of truth the work of love the work of a oneness of humanity let's eradicate the divisiveness any religion and I mean any religion religion was created by man think about it religion was created by man there is only one God there is one truth I believe in the Torah, which is the Old Testament. I believe that is the ultimate truth. I believe the Torah was given to all of humanity to live. And the Jewish nation received the Torah, became the Jewish nation by receiving that constitution to life. And if we live this constitution, as hard as it may be, and each nation, each individual takes that constitution onto oneself to live it, in the way that Jesus did, mm -hmm. um, we will, and, and, I, and I believe that Jesus was a great leader, if you will. I don't believe in him being the savior or the Messiah or any of that with all due respect to your faith and beliefs, but I believe he was a great leader, but I don't believe he ever had an intent to create the Christian faith that was created, or maybe he did, I don't know, I might be wrong about this, but it is what it is. And I believe religion divides, I believe in the one truth that is love, that is to love and honor thyself, the other, your other, which is anyone outside of yourself, and in so doing, and it, and it all starts with you. If you don't love yourself, you're not capable of loving another. If you don't love yourself, you do not love your creator. Call him God, call him the source, call him whatever makes you happy, but the, the creator, nature, the, the, sort, the oneness of the ultimate reality of universal life and love created us to love and honor ourselves and in so doing we will thereby honor and love one another valuing the, 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 um, 
valuing life, human life, humanity, individualism. And all of this is inherent in, in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the Torah. You know, even the, the story of creation, mm -hmm. you know, the, the divisiveness of the, of the heavens and the, and the waters. And all of this is indicative. It's all metaphorical indications, if you will, of what life is. And if you, if you go back to the origins of our creative, our creativity, our creation, it's only natural to see divisiveness existing within us conflict existing within us but in the end we got to the seventh day where we rest and we honor God and we honor our families and we honor ourse ourselves and and remembering God as our creator and that is the message of love and that's what we need to do we need to work we can't be sitting on the dole getting welfare checks for the rest of our lives and unemployment checks what is that what is that have you been? You're you're in Italy. I love Italy, and no, and no, socialism isn't the greatest, and isn't the greatest concept, but it works in nations. It works for nations if you're your own sovereign nation. But go to post. I was in 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 '98. I went to visit Bulgaria, Sofia, and it was 1998. It was only nine or ten years post communism, and it was a trial. It was sad. It was horrible. People. When you're used to not working, when you're used to not creating, to not thinking for yourself, and what happens when now you have the ability to do that? You'll either perish or, or create. It also breeds, it's a breeding ground for corruption. Any oppression, when we are, op think about, again, I gave the example in my last show with Dr. Sam, even parenting. When a, when a parent restricts his child, out of love, not the emotional need to control or possess or fear, but out of love, pure love, then the child will value the parent and be safe and perhaps be inspired to think and create and overcome that limitation. But if a child is being uh, limited or restricted or denied because of a parent's fear or inhibitions or, or fears, or fears. It's all about fear, people. It's just, it's really, it's just about fear or love. And if it's out of fear, then that child is going to rebel, is going to be, become corrupt, and engage in activities that the child, that the parent and the child and parent relationship, the trust will be severed. If you oppress, there, is, there cannot be trust, which is a very val valid and important factor in the def definition of love. Yeah, must have the concept, the element of trust. Now, a benevolent king, a benevolent god, a benevolent leader gives us the power to trust him because we know in the end, with that faith, all is good. He gave us life, he will give us life, he will sustain us. But if we are oppressed by laws and dogma and doctrine that divides us, that tells, other, tells us to kill others, then what happens to us, Ricardo? It's, you know, it's, 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 it's preposterous. What happens is corruption is born and rebellion is born. Not revolution, but rebellion. And the other extreme is born of that. And, and Lord have mercy on us, seriously, of what? And, and we, we, we're witnessing it on this planet every day, globally, nationally, and even locally. You know, people are out of jobs, crime rates are up, people are looting, people are stealing, people are, you know, you know, people don't have, they're frustrated, they're killing each other, they're drinking. It's very, very sad and humanity has the power. I believe in the power within each and every individual to find the strength within and overcome the fears and question authority, question anything that is oppressing you and then you have the power to change it and do something about it and that's my message. But um, I feel like I'm talking too much, and I really want to hear more about what you have to say. <laughs> no, well, you know, the fact is, like, when, um, I mean, what you're saying, I mean, I, I agree with you. I have to say that um, it always comes about the fact of, like, what you want to do with your life. It comes about, like, what... In knowing your purpose. Uh, knowing your purpose, knowing your goal, and about the creativity part is always interesting if you want to, uh, also want to bring back to, uh, like, the religious element uh, or the spiritual element. In fact, the, uh, create, the, word, the verb to create is, a verb, is the first verb present in the Old Testament. It's the, it's the first verb. 
the first verb that is present in the Old Testament is creation. Okay. The God created. Okay. The, that's the first verb. Elohim and bara, verb is bara, like about right. action. Right. So is uh, we are about action. We are about like creating. That's what men do. That's what's right. being done from the beginning. Even when it comes to like um, giving birth, right. you create a life. Absolutely. Or maybe you're like a, maybe it can be like the uh, instrument, uh, the vehicle. The vehicle. Uh, vehicle to like create the, the life, but. Uh, that's what it is. It's about creation, and we. This is like uh, inside ourselves. That's like part of our like human beings as well as our soul. So, on that regard, it brings me to think about the fact that if we create, we cannot settle for less than what we want, or less or less than what we are, or what we deserve, or what we deserve. And uh, on that regard, it's like so. What we deserve, what we we deserve to live. We don't deserve to survive. Okay, like Absolutely. people, people they are in uh, in wars, the nation they are in wars, like politically like unstable situation. They survive. They tend to survive, but they don't really live. And I think that should be our goal as human being of each one of us. Is like you deserve to live, to have the life that you want, and you can achieve that. It Absolutely. might be the worst situation ever, politically wise, family wise, but economically it, even. Economically wise, but the change comes with you. Okay, and that's kind of the message I want to give also in my in my work in my plays. Like you can make the choice. The choice is yours. It's nobody's choice but yours in right. order to make that difference. Right. It, with you and with also the people who love you, the people that are around you. Right. And it's all about believing it. Believing it, believing it. You have to believe you have to know yourself and believe in yourself to to be. And man was not man. I don't I don't mean to be effeminate by saying that, but or is that the pr pr correct that uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to be not feminine or or devaluing the value of the feminine or the woman. But human beings were created to create in, in God's image. If God created, He wants us to create. And when we're not loving ourselves, we are destroying ourselves. If we are living a fear-based life, we are self-destructing. One cigarette at a time, one bottle of booze at a time, one bad relationship at a time, one whatever gambling, loss, whatever it is you're abusing, whatever vice is yours, you're destroying yourself. You're destroying your soul. And that is not why God put us here. God put us here to live, to have, find liberty, like Thomas Jefferson said, to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the pursuit of happiness is individual for each of us. What makes you happy doesn't necessarily make me happy. But ultimately, I believe that freedom, having you know, the basic human needs of love and relationship and family and community and service. Service is a very important element of life. If you're not providing service to the universe, then what are you doing exactly? Why are you here? And why don't you ask yourself, what do you love to do and how can I turn my passion into a service for a humanity? How can I turn my weaknesses, what's been challenging me all along in my life, into a positive. How can I make lemonade out of, out of lemons? You know, if God's giving you lemons, you know, think for yourself, why is this happening? Maybe there's a message in this. Maybe I need to make lemonade. Maybe I need to turn this negative into a positive. Maybe I can take this talent, this potential, this energy, and apply it to something bigger than me and bigger than I ever dreamed or bigger than I ever really wanted. And, and I think oftentimes the great Inspira inspirational leaders of life, w whether they be artists or writers or leaders or, or anyone who's of, of great accomplishment, has always taken an adversity that, that's affected them and turned it into a positive. And that's, that's life, my darlings. We're all going to be plagued with adversity. I'm sure you have a story. I, I know I have a story. And I'd love to hear more of your story. And, um, but, uh, we all have the potential for turning lemons into lemonade and, and living a love-centered life and the choices within and, you know, dig. Dig, you know, is it guilt? What is, you know, oh, I'm doing this out of guilt. Well, where does guilt come from? Fear. Any, and I say it again, my friends, dice it up, slice it up any way you want it, but the, the 
two prevailing deciding factors affecting any human choice in our lives the two prevailing deciding factors are love and fear they determine our economic condition they determine our political condition they determine our personal emotional condition make your choices out of love ask yourself is it love or is it fear and if your answer is guilt well guess what darlings that's fear based if your answer is even if it's fear of God even if it's fear of God it shouldn't be fear of God it should be love of God it should be love of your God doesn't want you to fear him he wants you to honor him honor and fear think of that you know I was reading over the weekend when I had no power during daylight I was reading I was dabbling in the prince by Niccolo another fabulous Italian Niccolo Machiavelli, Machiavelli wrote the prince and and he was talking about how you know leaders you know, deciding between fear is it better to be a leader who is feared or, or a leader who is loved and sometimes you need to instill and maybe if you're going to be the next conqueror the next napoleon bonaparte but really do we really need another conqueror in this world do we really need another machiavelli i mean maybe there was an importance to his book but really folks if you make your choices out of love, I know it's not very Machiavellian to, to lead in such a fashion, but in my view, it's what God intended to, to, to lead with love, be a benevolent. We, we do need leaders. We do need someone at the helm making a decisions for, for, to govern us. But that leader shouldn't be someone who is, has, a, has an ego complex that is hell-bent on oppressing us or some kind of ego maniacal complex on proving something to himself or he, he, he leads because he wishes to be of service. He wants to be of service to humanity. He wants to be of service to his nation, to his people, to even a father, a patriarch mustn't be oppressive. He must be, he must be a benevolent patriarch. He must inspire and enable creativity and independence amongst his children and his, 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 his fruits. Not oppression, not dependence, because in, depend in dependence, there is oppression. In independence, as difficult or challenging as it may be at times, but there is always freedom and it's a, a valuable, valuable truth. Um, we're almost out of time, Ricardo, and it's been so fabulous chatting with you. Thank you. I wanted to share some of the photos that you brought with us about of the play and the cast. Um, this is opening night, where we have the, the party after the show. Yeah, I, I met Melanie. She was. They were all fabulous. Uh, Tim, of course, is my darling, darling friend. I love you, Tim. If you're watching, I know you're watching. I love you, Tim. Uh, Melanie Torres. I hope to have her on our show at some point soon. Um, and this was a, a really great cast, a really fabulous cast. I believe we have um, Tim. Tim and you and the director, Andre. Correct. And then we have some, that's Melanie Torres. Melanie, Taurus. you and again, Andre. Andre. And we have again the entire cast. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You have a picture from the show, actually. Right, this, is the, this was the set, on the set. Correct. Beautiful. You must, audience, you must try to get down and see the choice. It's playing at the Theater for the New City on September 3rd. The Theater for the 3rd. New City on September 3rd, Saturday at 9.30. The tickets were inexpensive. They were only $15. Yeah, they were only $15. Only, I mean, it's an inexpensive night out in today's economic time. Support the arts. Support my fabulous friend Ricardo and his wonderful and very talented cast. And I want to thank you, my... Um, dear audience for for joining me again and for giving me the chance to uh introduce a great talent ricardo thank you costa i hope i'll, I'll be seeing you again as well absolutely in your next episode and when you have the resurgence of the choice you mm -hmm. must keep me posted so that i announce it to the audience i'm sure they're going to be seeking it if they can't get into new york this weekend i know it's labor day weekend so it's tough a lot of people might be away but if you're in town it's a great night out, 9 o'clock, Saturday night at the, news, the Theater for the New City in New York. It's on 1st Avenue between 9th and 10th. 
the message, my darlings, is a message of love. It starts with you as an individual. It starts with your individuality. It starts with your questioning anything that might attempt to oppress you in any way, shape, or form. Oscar's sleeping. Oscar, I know you haven't seen much of Oscar today, and I just woke him up, my little rascal. He's such a good boy. You want to say hello to the audience, Oscar? Oscar, say hi. And this, my darlings, is a, a brilliant example of what true love is. Yes. Oscar likes to get his belly rubbed. Anyway. He made um, his choice. Yeah, he made his choice. <laughs> Mommy just woke him up, and now Mommy's getting all these beautiful kisses. But my, my dear beloved audience, please tune in. Please spread the word. I have a very important message here. I know you are watching, and I know you're listening, and, and it's going to be a process and a program, and we're going to do this every week, and you're going to get some great tips. And I promise that on Saturday, I'll get to answer some of your Ask I Yell It questions. In fact, I may just dedicate the entire show to Ask I Yell It questions because I know you've been writing me and forgive me for not responding sooner, but I will, I promise. And um, with all my heart and all my love, until next week, I am always I Yell It. And this is my beloved Oscar. Yes, and he loves his mommy. And Ricardo, thank you again. Thank you, thank you so, so much, much for, for having joining, me. For, for, for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, everyone. Ciao.